மறக்காம சர்பிரைஸ் பண்ணுங்க thank you okay so before we get into the chess i do want to take a moment and explain how to use this course uh there will be 50 uh tactics to solve and if you've already purchased the course you'll hopefully have these tactics downloaded and maybe you're already solving them um i would recommend that you solve the tactics before continuing the video lessons um because uh, the best approach is to really try and be proactive try and solve the the tactics without any assistance if you run into trouble if you can't solve all of them that's perfectly normal and that's why i'll be covering every single position and exercise in depth throughout the course um but before we get to the tactics i do want to provide several lessons to demonstrate some some different uh different ideas in london and every lesson will be a game and these games are meant to really show the um the the venom of the london show how very strong masters can can go down seemingly very easily and hopefully there will be a lot of inspiration to gain by watching these videos so solve the tactics watch the videos and then um then if you want to go back to the tactics and see if you can better solve them so let's get into the first game uh this is one of my favorite games ever in the london um not only because it's played by world champion magnus carlson but also because i've used the same game magnus's same opening preparation to defeat a handful of turn a uh, handful of players once in a tournament and a couple times online um now the setup that magnus played very simple um starting with d4 um now i'm i'm going to assume that most players know what the london is we're not going to spend too much time talking about uh what is the london opening but uh, essentially d4 and bishop f4 is automatic london and it's the type of thing you can play against most black setups in this game black chose one of the more common setups um perhaps one of the the most popular lines after knight c6 magnus plays knight d2 e6 knight of 3 bishop d6 and perhaps this is the first moment we can uh, we can discuss where the bishops are uh, are now staring at each other and it's a question what should white do with the bishop on f4 you can leave it there you can trade on d6 you can retreat to g3 the general rule is to retreat to g3 for a few reasons uh of course you don't want to kind of damage your pawn structure by taking by having to take with e pawn but also if black ever takes on g3 now you would be very happy to open h file through the rook and we will see this idea many times throughout the course um so tension remains between the bishops uh carlson's opponent very strong gm marin uh, bosiocic castled in this position and now magnus played a uh, perhaps a secondary move uh the most common move by far in this position is bishop d3 very playable move i've actually talked about this move in uh previous lectures that i've done but um magnus played a uh, more trendy move in this position and actually a, a somewhat venomous move if, if black is unprepared he played bishop to b5 uh the idea of this move is to potentially capture on c6 and there is so there's some nice positional ideas if if black isn't careful uh i do want to show let's imagine black plays a6 bishop takes c6 takes c6 and then the idea would, for white is queen a4 and i've actually had a, a number of games where uh, black runs into some trouble let's imagine plays a natural move like bishop e7 defending the pawn on c6 then white has a nice idea to capture on d6 queen takes d6 and then queen a3 and if i'm not mistaken this is uh this is winning a pawn because of the pin knight d7 would be forced and then knight b3 and c5 is not only pinned but it's attacked three times by the knight the pawn and the queen and um and I'm looking at this game up on uh, on the online database and it's been played several times on the chess white has a very good score in this position so going back because white is potentially threatening to take on c6 bosiocic played a very normal looking move here uh knight e7 which when you first look at it it's very logical there's ideas of uh perhaps maneuvering the the knight to f5 and black is also leaving the bishop on b5 a bit misplaced 
Um, however, based on this game, I will say that knight e7 maybe isn't the best move for uh, for black because of uh, of white's very simple reply, bishop to d3. And if we take a look at this position, we can uh, we can compare it to just a couple moves ago. Let's go back a couple moves. Um, if white played bishop d3 here, we actually reached the same position as in this knight e7 line, only the knight is more actively placed on, on c6. If we go forward to what happened after bishop b5, knight e7, the bishop reti retreating to d3, um, it's the same position, but black's knight is just slightly more misplaced. And we're going to see how this plays a role later in the game. So Bosiocic continued normal move, pawn b6. And now Carlson uh, played a very, very strong move here. And I would encourage uh, viewers to pause the video and attempt to find the next move for white. It's um, actually, I don't want to give too many clues, but I will give you guys a chance to pause your video, find the move for white. And now we'll go on. So the uh, the move played is is a very strong central strike. And it's a bit unusual for this sort of situation where black is castled and white's king is still in the center. Um, and normally in these sort of situations, you don't want to open up the center until your king is safely castled. But in this position, Carlson actually breaks uh, breaks this principle and goes for the, the central expansion with pawn e4. And the reason why this is so strong is because there's a number of targets in Black's position that are uh, perhaps vulnerable for tactics. If we see right away, the, the obvious threat for white is playing e5, hitting the bishop on d6, as well as the knight on f6. Um, on top of that, there's many lines where the rook on a8 could be attacked, and also the pawn on h7. And we're going to see this, uh, this play out in just a few moves. So in this position, black has to respond to the immediate threat, really doesn't want to allow white to play e5 and just get an, a, an amazing space advantage. So Gosiewicz played probably the only logical move here, d take e4. And after knight take e4, uh, Carlson keeps initiative. This is another very big theme of this game. Uh, once e4 was played, Carlson didn't really let the initiative go until he had uh, a winning advantage. And we'll see how that happens. So after knight take e4, white is clearly threatening the bishop on d6. Black has to respond. Black takes on e4. Bishop take e4, recapturing, hitting the rook on a8. Uh, only move for black is to play rook b8. And now in this position, because uh, bishop on g3 is aligned with the rook on b8, uh, Carlson plays just a very simple move. d takes c5. Uh, and this essentially wins a pawn. If we look at uh, Black's situation, this bishop is attacked three times. Uh, so there's no time to actually recapture on c5. Bishop takes c5 would just lose a rook on b8. So because of this, uh, Black's next move is pretty much forced. Bishop takes g3. And now Carlson plays the very simple h takes g3. And as we saw earlier, uh, or as I mentioned earlier, the potential for the h file to open up can be very dangerous. And, and we see that in this position. Um, white is up a pawn currently, has won the pawn on c5. And with recapturing on g3, white is now attacking the pawn in h7. So black is already under some, uh, some pretty big pressure. Now from this position, uh, black played f5, which maybe is the best try, given that, uh, I mean, you attack the bishop and um, trying to eventually recapture the pawn. But from this point forward, there's, uh, there's actually a forced uh, combination for white to further increase the advantage. And I recommend that you pause the video and try and find the continuation for white. So the move here is not to defend the bishop, but it's to go for counterplay. This is a really important concept in chess when you're being attacked you, of course, do want to consider just defending, but it's really important to also consider going for counterplay and trying to seize initiative from your opponent. In this case, Carlson plays a very nice sequence, starting with queen take d8, rook take d8. And now a move like bishop to c2 would perhaps concede the advantage because then black could regain the pawn, but a very nice move from white 
pawn c6. Leaving the bishop on e4 undefended, but having the menacing threat of pawn c7 forking the rooks. So if we imagine pawn take e4, pawn c7, uh, this is going to end very badly for, for black because white is guaranteed to win material and just have a, uh, a decisive advantage. So going, uh, going back to this position, black is already lost. And now we'll just kind of see how Carlson converts the position uh, with, with very nice ease. After knight d5, uh, very simply captures on d5, rook take d5, Carlson goes ahead, initiates the trade on the d file. And this pawn on c6, it looks weak, but black can't really attack it or win it. And as we'll see, uh, after bishop a6, knight e5, very uh, beautiful knight in the heart of black's position, supporting the pawn on c6. Just a few more moves were played after rook c8, c4, b5, and then very nice move b4, uh, allowing b takes c4, but then a4. And Par Carlson just continued with this... Uh, this very aesthetic pawn storm. Rook d8 check was played. King c2, rook d5, and then the nail in the coffin, pawn f4, reinforcing the knight, and Bosiochich resigned in this position. Um, the very nice 25 move win. Uh, very nice miniature from, from Carlson. And I really like this game because an initiative was just, uh, it just started after e4. And um, black really had very few resources to deal with uh, with the pressure that white was able to exert in the position. And this is something we see a lot in the London because of white's very harmonious setup. Sometimes when the center opens up, white is just better prepared for, uh, for the resulting tactics. And we can see that white really never let go of, uh, of the threats. So going forward, I want to show one um, one small nuance in this opening because I actually reached this position uh, in a tournament game. It was a, a rapid tournament uh, playing someone pretty significantly lower rated than me. And I actually forgot what to do here. I wasn't sure whether I was supposed to take on d8 or take on g3. And I took on d8. Um, and I'm showing this because it, it can actually transpose um, into the, the Carlson game. But there's, there's a nice kind of uh, nuance where we're allowing black to take on f2, which looks like a very natural response because after bishop take f2, black does regain the pawn. But this is actually a trap. And if, if black plays bishop take f2, it's just going to be lost because after king take f2, rook take d8, uh, we see the same theme of pawn c6. And c7 is very hard to meet. I think the only move for black is to play knight to d5 in this position. And after a move like rook hd1, uh, white is threatening c4 and c7, and this would just be lost. So I would recommend if uh, if you do get this position and you have the choice between h take g3 or queen take d8, I would recommend going for queen take d8, giving the opportunity for black to go wrong with bishop take f2. And if rook take d8 is played, it's just uh, it's just a transposition where if f5 uh, is played here, we can continue the same idea as Carlson with c6. So I hope uh, I hope this this demonstrates some nice ideas in the London. Um, going back to the opening with bishop to b5, this is uh, this is a relatively new line, and it's a line which is still developing in opening theory. But this is uh, this is one of the games which really has made this line uh, more intriguing, more intriguing for the white side. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, we're going to take a look at some other games uh, demonstrating some knife play in the London, and stay tuned for the next lesson. Thank you.